record. And we are, and we are now recording. So for my classroom management assignment, this is my mother. This is Miss Tita. She is a private school teacher uh, with Waco Montessori School, and she has been there for how many years? Twenty-two. Twenty-two, 22 years. years. And what grade is it that you teach? So for the, uh, so I have not taught in the classroom, in my present classroom for 22 years, or my present age group. Um, I've taught uh, EC children, which are um, early childhood children from, from the ages three to seven. Um, and that would be in grade equivalents that would be pre-K to kinder. All right. Well, um, let's go ahead and get started with this, with these questions. So for my first question, I have, how do you manage student behavior? Yes, yeah, so student behavior, um, I think my best way to manage student behavior is by introducing um, what is called the one, two, three magic. And so before the uh, behavior presents itself, I introduce one, two, three magic, which means I let the students know, make them aware of what that means. And what one, two, three magic means is uh, you are given the child three chances. So number one is just recognizing the issue. Uh, number two is a reminder. And then number three is uh, discipline action where I, I would take the student and, and talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. And so I, um, that is how I manage it by giving them my expectations as far as uh, behavior goes. And, and that is done at the very beginning of school um, while we are introducing rules and, um, and behavior and all at the very beginning of school. Uh, did you get this um, kind of behavior management skill from a workshop or was it from a friend? Uh, one, two, three magic is something that we adapted as a school, as a program, and it has worked uh, efficiently throughout the year. So we have kind of adapted to it and have stuck to it all along. All right. Um, Let's go on to the next question. So how do you organize a student's academic progress in your classroom? So because my classroom is a multi-age classroom, um, I have different methods of um, managing their academic progress. Uh, for example, uh, the, a three-year-old um, progress um, uh, progress recording would be different from that of a uh, of a five or six year old. So what I do for let's begin with the pre K student, which these students are ages three to four, sometimes five. So those guys, um, what what I have the system I have in place is I have what is called goals, and so the goals or or a series uh, of um, plans uh, that I um, work on on weekends, and then, um, and then bring him, and, you know, and then I introduce him to the child on Monday morning, uh, if they need assistance and direction, because the Montessori, uh, the Montessori method, uh, the idea is for the child to be able to direct himself. So the goals come in in place when the child um, appears uh, unsure or lost in the classroom uh, with need of direction. So when I have those goals down, then I can direct the child. You know, the goal may be uh, for that particular child, it may be, uh, you know, uh, under the, um, under the area of language, it may be that the child needs to go practice his sounds, you know, what sound each uh, letter makes in the, in the alphabet. 
Um, and that kind of gives the child a reminder as well as, as well as a reassurance that, you know, yes, I can do this and I can do it myself, you know? So, uh, and then goals for the uh, older children, for the kinder students. So um, I don't, actually, I don't have goals for the kinder student. I have what's called a work plan, a work plan slash work contract. So these guys get um, uh, a small piece of paper that's called work contract. And so that has been built in according to their uh, skill of what's been presented. And so we just follow along. For example, if a kinder student has uh, been working on place values, recognize them tens, hundreds, thousands place, then, uh, then I as a teacher would evaluate that skill. If they're ready for what's called a number roll, which is the next uh, work in sequence, then uh, I list that in their work plan or their work contract. And keep in mind at this, by this point, the kinder student knows what, they know what the work means and where the work is located in the classroom. So if I have uh, moved them up to, to um, number roll, they know where the work is located and they know the steps to that work. And so, you know, everything is a sequence. So if you give the student the lesson that they can follow, they can follow in reviewing that lesson and then they should be able to direct themselves to that particular lesson. Uh, and all of, that, all of that is recorded or documented in, um, in one of my uh, paper programs that I keep for myself as well as um, sharing that with parents when necessary during meetings and conferences and all. I always found the uh, Montessori method to just be extremely interesting. Um, for question three, um, what is your method to deal with inappropriate student behavior? So for that question, uh, I inappropriate behavior, uh, first I would recognize uh, what the situation was that brought up that inappropriate behavior. Okay, so first you have to analyze what happened there and then uh, allow the child to, um, to talk and you know, speak their feelings. Um, it may be that uh, the child was just having a bad day um, on that particular day. And that's where the, you, might, you know, maybe the, maybe the inappropriate behavior began at home. So you want to give the child a chance to speak and um, see how they're feeling and why are they feeling that way? Well, you know, what triggered that behavior? Um, and uh, if the behavior uh, does not uh, get better, then um, I remind the child of the one, two, three magic that I uh, mentioned in question one. All uh, right. But, uh, yeah, I think that is my answer for, for question three. Mm -hmm. um, that concludes our interview process. I'm going to stop recording, but I do have a couple more questions um, after this. So let me go ahead and stop this recording.